Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. In today's lesson, we'll be putting together some simple lines and shapes to create a cute little child playing in a puddle. Under my One of the most interesting parts of this painting will be the umbrella. where we're going to paint a color wheel. Let's get started. The materials that we'll need for this lesson are a sheet of paper, a black permanent marker or a black crayon. Don't use a washable marker because we're going to paint over it with washer with watercolor paints. So if you use a washable marker, it's going to spread and smear. We don't want a washable black marker. So if you don't have a permanent marker, you could use a black crayon. And then we need some watercolor paints. For starters, we're going to be using the black marker or black crayon to draw the outlines of our picture and then we'll paint. So I'm going to leave my paints alone for now and I'm going to fold my paper in half. What? Why am I? What? You'll see. I'm folding my paper in half. Now, is that the way I want to fold it? Are the corners lined up? No, we want those corners to kiss when we fold the paper in half. Mwah! There we go. And we want these corners to kiss too. Mwah! And uh, so the way we fold our paper in half is you make sure the corners are lined up on both sides and then you hold those corners down and you press the paper down. Now, if you've got big hands like me, I can hold it down with my fingertips and then press down with my thumbs. If you've got smaller hands, you might have to hold this side down with a hand and press this side down with your other hand, whatever works for you. Now, the only reason we're doing that is just to find the middle and kind of separate the two halves of our picture. On this folded page, right here on the outside of this folded page, I want to make a ginormous letter X, humongous. It's, I don't want it to go all the way from corner to corner. I want it to be in the middle, but I want it to go all the way from the top to the bottom here. Like that. Okay, notice it didn't go all the way to the corners. It stayed in the middle. And then that's how many lines is that? It's one, two diagonal lines. I got a diagonal line. I got a diagonal line. They both go through that dot. I need one more line that goes through that dot. Horizontal. Okay. Notice that this line, again, does not go all the way to the edges. It's about as long as these other lines, right? Okay, let's unfold the paper now. And we're going to connect the end points of those lines like this. From here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. And across the top, I mean, I could just draw maybe a little bit there. This is the umbrella. This is the umbrella. Underneath the umbrella, we're going to have a raincoat. We're not going to see uh, this person's head because it's like they're, they're like, the umbrella is kind of sideways to us. So it's kind of covering up their head, overlapping, covering up their head. To draw the raincoat, make sure your paper is unfolded. And it's the raincoat is going to overlap underneath the bottom of the umbrella here. So it's going to be like a triangle, but the top of the triangle would be up here. And the raincoat, you don't see the top of that triangle. So it kind of more looks like a trapezoid because the top of that triangle got cut off by being overlapped, right? Looks like a trapezoid. Inside that trapezoid slash triangle slash whatever you want to call it, we want to make that look like a raincoat by adding the like the line down the middle where it buttons up. And so we'll draw that line. Uh, it's going to be kind of on the side because this person is like facing to the side. So don't go straight down with it. Kind of come down to the side. And then a row of buttons right next to that line. Just little dots. And then we need two feet. I mean, I guess you could draw three feet, but that would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? We're going to draw two feet. And the way we're going to draw those legs is we're going to draw two lines that come down and then 
a round boot, and then we want to draw the top of the boot up here. It's like a rain boot. That makes one leg. We need the second leg to be overlapping behind the first one. So to make that second leg with a boot on, I'm going to draw another line that comes down close to this one, but not quite touching it. And when I get real close to the top of that boot, I'm going to wrap around and overlap behind this boot. And then I need that line for the top of the boot on this leg. And so there, there it is. And you see how that looks like two feet? Like we're looking at the side of the person and their two feet, like one's overlapping, covering the other one up. And then we need to draw the puddle. Now the puddle, we don't want to make a humongous puddle. We want the puddle to be underneath and behind and overlapped behind and underneath these feet. And it's going to be a wiggly, wavy, bumpy puddle. So be free and wiggly and wavy and bumpy with that line. And it can kind of take on whatever shape, you know, organically. However, just wiggle it, right? And then when you're done with all those things, we're ready to paint. When you're ready to paint, make sure you have a little bit of water in your tray and make sure you have a pretty clean brush. If you need to clean it, you can tap, tap, tap it in your water gently. And um, remember that with watercolor paints, you always need a wet brush. So I'm going to put my brush in the water. Then I'm going to pick a color to start with. We should all start with red. We're going to make this um, color wheel umbrella. To make a color wheel, we got to think about the colors of the rainbow, the order of the colors in the rainbow. What order do those colors come in? Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Right? So I'll start with R, red. I got a wet brush, put it in the water, stir up my red. And I can pick any one of these parts of my umbrella. It doesn't really matter where I start. I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to fill this section with red paint. When my brush gets dry, I get some water. I stir up the color and I paint some more. Remember, water, color, paint, watercolor paint. That's what they're called. That's how you use them. You put your brush in the water, you put your brush in the color, and you paint. Watercolor paint. Once I'm done filling that triangle, that section of my umbrella with red, the next section, and you can go either direction with this, it doesn't matter, but the next section should be what color? What comes after red in the rainbow? orange. So I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm going to stir up the orange and I'll paint. And when my brush stops working, I get some water, get some color, and then I paint. What color comes next after orange in the rainbow? Red, orange, yellow. Yellow should be next. I, do I want to put yellow over here? At this point, once I've made two colors, it does matter where the next one goes. The next one should go in order next to it. Red, orange, yellow, right? I don't want to go red, orange, and then jump over here to go yellow. Yellow comes next. So I'm going to clean off my brush, stir up the yellow, and paint. Water, color, paint. What comes after yellow? Red, orange, yellow, green. Green comes next. Water. Stir up the color and paint. Water, color, paint. Paint real nice and neat and careful. Try to stay inside the lines. Water, color, paint. And try not to put 
too much paint on your paper. You don't want big puddles, right? Notice how my paint is all kind of soaking into the paper. I don't want to leave big puddles of water floating on top of the paper. Those are going to make a big mess. Add red, orange, yellow, green. What comes next? Blue. Water. Color. And paint. Water. Color. Paint. Water. Color. Paint. Awesome. And the last color of the rainbow is purple. Water, color, make sure I stir that purple up, and paint. Water, color, paint. Water, color, paint. Cool, I've made a color wheel. Now, a color wheel is a very useful tool. It looks kind of like the rainbow, except those colors are arranged in a circle instead of in like parallel bands across the sky. But the color wheel is actually really useful, and we'll be talking about the color wheel in our next lesson when we talk about how to show emotions and feelings and all sorts of stuff like that with different colors. But I'm gonna leave that for now and move on down to the raincoat. What color is a raincoat? Usually a raincoat is yellow, so I'm going to kind of clean off my brush a little, grab the yellow. I mean, maybe you could do an orange raincoat or a pink raincoat. I mean, you could do any color, I guess, but I'm going to do a standard yellow raincoat. And um, you, could just, you could choose. If you wanted to do a pink raincoat with purple boots or something like that, whatever. It's totally, totally up to you. I am gonna do a yellow raincoat and yellow rain boots, and then maybe uh, some black pants or blue pants. I think I'll go with blue. No, I think I'll go with, I think I'll go with brown. I, I don't know, I could go anywhere. I could go with red pants, or maybe I could go with purple pants. I'm gonna go with red. I'm gonna go with, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't decide, I can't make up my, it, you know what, just pick a color, it doesn't matter. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the green. Green it is. Green pants. All right, there's two more steps to go. We need to paint the puddle and then we need a splash. So here's what we're going to do first. We're going to grab some blue paint, water, color, paint, fill in that puddle with blue. Water, color, paint. And when you're done filling in the puddle, we want some splash. This kid is playing in that puddle. This kid is having fun in that puddle. And how am I gonna make splashes? Well, check this out. I'm gonna get my brush really wet by just dipping it into the water. I'm gonna get some of that blue paint. I'm gonna hold out a finger and I'm gonna smack my brush into my finger like this. <gasps> you see how that splashed a bunch of blue paint all over my page? Do that a couple of times. When your brush is dry, get it wet again. Get a little bit more blue paint on it and smack, smack, smack. Don't do it too much, but do it enough to get the feel that there is a splash of water coming up out of that puddle making a big mess having fun with the puddles and yeah you'll get paint on your hands and whatever you can wash that off it's fine and if you get any paint on your table or your desk while you're doing that that's okay you can just wipe it off with a paper towel when you're done it'll be all fine in today's lesson we had a bunch of fun making a big splash and a big mess we also had our first experience with a color wheel, which we'll be talking about in our next lesson as we discuss 
how to express your feelings with different kinds of colors. I can't wait to see you then.